In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Father George Teodoro, and on behalf of Deacon Uncle Tom, of the parishioners of our church, we'd like to welcome you to St. Francis Xavier to celebrate the marriage of Juan and Sarah. My father is Filipino, my mother is Irish American, so this wedding holds a special place in my heart as we celebrate not only the joining of two people, but of two families and two circles of love coming together to create one new and holy union. And so we pray today and we bless uh, Juan and Sarah, and we ask that, the, that our God, through word and through sacrament, may come upon them and rest upon them forever as they begin this new life together. And so let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these servants, Juan and Sarah, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated and listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Sirach. Blessed is the husband of a good wife. Twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband. Peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband. Her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 34, Taste and See.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? Jesus said in reply, have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In uh, preparing Juan and Sarah, and specifically for preparing for this wedding, I ask them to write letters to each other. Write down your hopes, your desires, your expectations for the many years to come as a married couple. Beautiful. Here's wands. Give me a second. hopes and dreams and I gather expectations. <laughs> These are very, very private, personal. You know, I ask them to dig deep into their hearts and, and share this. So what I'm going to do is read them to you. <laughs> I, Anna, I read Wands. This is so long. I haven't read it yet, so this, it's going to be new to me as to you. Let me kind of look. Hmm. 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 
Well, I mean, I'm just giving the pages where you see that, but it looks like every page has two phrases typed over and over. So I guess these two phrases are really important to Sarah. You ready? The first phrase is, bear down, Arizona. <laughs> the second phrase, probably more important, beat LA. <laughs> hey, happy wife, happy life. You knew I was going to get on a shot on the Lakers, right? Okay, all right. Now, seriously, um, that was the outline for my homily. I decided to scrap it. It's good. Um, they really did write letters to each other, and I'm not going to read them, but they were striking because both of them talked about how the other made that person better. stronger. They push each other to be better. It's very, very Christian, very, very Catholic. I use a phrase very often, it's God made coincidences. You know, things happen and they're not really coincidences. So literally like yesterday, because sometimes I scroll. There was a quote from Thomas Aquinas, famous Dominican priest from many years ago, that said, to love is to will the good of another. So Juan, do you want good things for Sarah? Sarah, do you want good things for Juan? Congratulations, you're in love. Now validated. What a wonderful definition of love, though, because as your marriage continues, as you welcome children, you will want the good of your children as your parents have wanted the good for you, and you will find a new kind of love. And your love for each other will continue to grow through the years. Uh, you know... <laughs> I also thought I'm going to have a couple disjointed things. I'm going to try to put them together. There's a prayer or a comment about prayer that Mother Teresa, now Saint Mother Teresa, said. She used to say, I thought prayer would change things. But now I know that prayer changes us and we change things. So I think that a lot of times, because right, we, we say a prayer like, dear God, please stop hunger in the world. Well, how could God deny that prayer? It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thought, right? And we pray that, and there's still hunger. But if we follow what Mother Teresa said, well, if we think hunger is just something that happens in faraway places like Zimbabwe, there's hunger within a couple miles of where we are right now. So we say the prayer, God, help me to understand what I could do to help stop hunger. And then we find things, St. Mary's Food Bank, St. Vincent de Paul, on and on, things we can do locally to help stop hunger. And there we have the example of what Mother Teresa was talking about. Because we humans, we members of the church, we are the eyes and ears and hands of God. We are acting to fulfill his will when we love, when we seek the good of others. Okay, so put that disjointed thought for here. And now, a bad joke. Another disjointed thought. There's a man, and he's living alone in his house, and there's a flood coming. 
and there's news uh, alerts on his phone, on the television, on the radio, you should evacuate because the flood's coming to his house. But he stays, and he prays to God, dear Lord, save me from the flood. A truck pulls up out in front of his house, and it's members of the local sheriff's department, and they're saying, hey, come, we'll give you a ride. You need to get out of here, it's gonna flood. And he says, no, I have prayed to God to save me from the flood. So they move on. The floodwaters get to his house, and now the road is flooded. And the water is so high that some people come by on a boat in front of his house, and they see that he's still in his house. And they say, come, get in our boat. We'll take you away from here. The floodwaters are rising still. And he says, no, I have prayed to God. God will save me from the flood. The waters continue to rise. He climbs up onto the roof of his house and the waters are lapping on the shingles, coming closer and closer to him. And a helicopter flies by and they see this man on the roof of his house. And they come low and they're using the loudspeaker. They say, we'll drop a rope for you. Climb up on the rope and we'll get you out of here. The floodwaters are coming. They're going to get even higher. And he says, no, I pray to God. God will save me from the flood helicopter moves on. The floodwaters continue and tragedy strikes and the man is engulfed in the water and he drowns. He goes to heaven and he meets God. He's angry. He says, God, I prayed to you to save me from the flood and look what happened. And God just kind of smiled and looked down and said, (laughs) I sent you a truck, I sent you a boat, I even sent you a helicopter. You see, we are the hands and eyes and ears of God for each other. So, Got to ask you a question. So, Juan, do you believe that Sarah is your truck, your boat, your helicopter? You know what I mean? Because of the story. Sarah, do you believe that Juan is your truck, your boat, your helicopter? What need is there like that second reading to be anxious? You have each other. You want the good for each other. That is love. It's a choice. Please continue to make that choice. And as the children come, make the choice for them. Now, are you ready to make the two become one flesh, like that gospel reading? Please join me. Who else is coming? Best man, maid of honor, Tessa, are you coming? Yeah, this is the part where they're going to exchange vows. I want you guys to give each other a hug. (laughs) They know why I did that. It's in their letters. Everybody ready? So I'm going to read the words of the church here. And the the word church comes up often. I want you to remember when I say the word church, I'm not talking about this building we're in. I'm talking about us, the people. We are the church, okay? So dearly beloved, you've come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. 
Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. It's a quiz. Ready? Question one. Juan and Sarah, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Okay. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? All right, since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, please join your hands together and declare your consent before God and his church. And I'm adding parenthetically, you too now are the ministers of the sacrament, and this is where it happens, through your promises to each other. So Juan, please repeat after me. I, Juan, take you, Sarah, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. Sarah, please repeat after me. I, Sarah, take you on to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. And now we're going to have the blessing of the rings. You do have them, right? I No, I saw them earlier. Okay, hang on to them right there. I'll be right back. We use the symbol of water that, you know, we use for baptism. Water is a symbol of life. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on them. It's just water. May the Lord bless these rings which you give to each other as the sign of your love and fidelity. And everybody says what? Amen. Amen. Good. All right. Now if you can give Juan Sarah's ring. It's the smaller one. <laughs> Her fingers are smaller. That's why. Okay. Okay, Juan, repeat after me. Sarah, Sarah. receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the receiving part. Okay. All right, Sarah. Repeat after me. Juan, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And now if we can have Grandma and Grandpa come on up with the lasso. So the lasso is a symbol of two becoming one. It's a symbol of unity. And the custom is to have padrinos or elders in the family present these. So, you know, uh, yeah, it'll be easier for them. Come forward, yeah. Have a new one. So my brother and sister have been married 61 years. I just have to remember how old I am. <laughs> Please place it on me. 
So it's like, it's like a double rosary. So there's the added symbolism of asking for the intercession of Mary, our Blessed Mother, to help them during their marriage. And we have that symbolism of the two becoming one. So if you guys will just stay here for a minute, what we're going to do is the universal prayer, the prayers of the faithful. So who's doing the prayers of the faithful? Come on up. So folks, we're going to pray now for this couple, with this couple. So let me read the little introduction. So my friends, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister, Sarah, and our brother, Juan, let us commend them to the Lord. That these faithful Christians, Sarah and Juan, newly joined in holy matrimony, may always enjoy health and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he will bless their covenant as he chose to sanctify marriage at Cana in Galilee. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they be granted perfect and fruitful love, peace, and strength, and that they bear faithful witness to the name of Christian. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Christian people may grow in virtue day by day, and that all who are burdened by any need may receive the help of grace from above. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the grace of the sacrament will be renewed by the Holy Spirit in all married persons here present. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we ask you to graciously, graciously pour out upon Sarah and Juan the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing through Christ our Lord, and the church says, Amen. All right, so now we can remove that symbolism. Okay. If you guys want to go have a seat, we're going to prepare the altar and have some music. Everybody can have a seat. You can go over there for a minute. Okay. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of the sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you may make them partakers of the divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving grace, so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so, with the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Juan and Sarah, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
so let us stand and together pray that prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. So now I'd ask the two of you to kneel for the nuptial blessing. Let us pray to the Lord for this bride and groom who come to the altar as they begin their married life, that they may be always bound together by love for one another. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image and willed that their unions be crowned with your blessing, we humbly beseech you for these, your servants, who are joined today in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing, O Lord, come down upon this bride, Sarah, and upon Juan, her companion for life. And may the Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn their family and enrich the church. And we ask this blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Sarah, and all my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
mi luz te Benedicta tu We have tasted God's love poured out as body and blood. And so now we come to our final blessing. So once more, Juan and Sarah, I'd ask you to step forward to the center here. And I'd invite all of your gathered family and friends to extend your hands out in blessing over the, our couple. May the Lord Jesus, who graced the marriage of Cana by his presence, bless you and your loved ones. Amen. Amen. May he who loved the church to the end unceasingly pour out his love into your hearts. Amen. Amen. May the Lord grant that, bearing witness to faith in his resurrection, you may await with joy the blessed hope to come. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended, so it is my great privilege to present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Miguel. Amen.